for doing your lab who had graph paper when they did it? Yeah, well, use it. Like all the time, math and science, you should use graph paper. Why do you want line paper? You don't ever need horizontal lines in English. That's why they got line paper. They're just, sorry, vertical lines. You want horizontal lines, okay? Stand corrected. Um, but why, what's the disadvantage of using graph paper for just doing all your notes in math? That's a good idea. Europeans do that. Is it a little more money? I don't know. I'm not so sure, okay? So your next lab, you know, graph paper, if you got it, it saves you having to worry about where my graph's going to be. What do I, I got another sheet of graph paper, right? It's just, it's just nice to do. Okay, so again, variable y is the dependent. It goes there, right? Y is vertical. Horizontal is x, and that is the independent variable. We say y depends on x, okay? Times the common one, we'll do quite a few graphs where that will be time on the x-axis. And the distance, for example, will depend on the time. Or maybe the velocity depends on the time, not the other way around. Time's always independent, 99.9% .9 of the time. Hey, this is what's known as a linear function because the graph makes what kind of a shape? A line. Now, uh, is your data always going to be exactly perfect like that? Or is there going to be some errors where you're not going to get perfect data? Like your frequency lab you just did. Is there going to be some kind of error? Of course, because we're not perfect. And our instruments aren't perfect either. We try to get the best instruments we can. Okay, we don't want a $10 Sherwood hockey stick. That's wood. When we can get a better tool, we can get a nice composite. How much are these things these days? 150, 200 bucks, coal? 300 for a hockey stick. Composite, okay? It's a little better of a tool. Puck goes a little faster, nicer tool. Okay, we already talked about accuracy, precision. So one thing over where here these are the questions you want to do but if you know this great and if you don't so i got my data i'm going to plot my points okay and they come out like this so that's it don't fudge data guys you got what you got okay if that's what it is then don't go oh my god because if that's supposed to be a linear relationship, where's the line? Well, some of you guys know this and some of you don't. What does this say? What to think about. First, we determine the slope. There's another word for slope in here. Let's write it before I forget. When they say the word constant, that's what they mean. They mean slope. Okay? To do this, select two points on the line of best fit. Blah, 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 blah. What does this say? This is the important part. Do not use your data points. You use your line of best fit, which is gathered from your data points. So if this is what I have, well, where's my line of best fit? Um, what do I do? Do I join these two points? Don't write this. Do I join these two? Uh, maybe I join that one and that one. You see all the variances in slope here? Well, maybe my line goes like that. You don't do that. What you want to do, and I'll repeat this when, we, when it comes to the time, but since it's in here, let's do it. You want to get a line that's pretty well in between all of these. What you want is an equal number of dots on top of the line as equal number of dots below the line. Now, if this is a relationship like distance in time and I know where time was zero that's when I started the stopwatch and that's where I took my displacement equals zero then it kind of makes sense even though this wasn't one of my data points it kind of makes sense that I want a zero zero point here right because how could I be I don't know two meters from where I wanted to start at time zero so taking that into account I want to go through there and that's not a very good line. Let me try again. 
Maybe my line looks like that. I got two above and one, two, three, four, five below. Nope, I got to do better. Okay, that's when you want a nice clear ruler. And I got a couple of these to borrow when we get to it. You're going to want to put it here and you keep looking at it until you get the same number above and the same number below, if you can do it. So, what's a, what? That's not where my ruler is. The calibration's out. Holy cow. Okay, um, anyway. Now my ruler was aiming down here to make that line, okay? So, that's pretty good. I've got two dots above my line. I have three below it. And it's actually going through a couple of the dots, okay? Once you have your line of best fit, you forget about the data points. To get your slope, you use points on the line. And then if you have graph paper here, well, like, that's one I would want to use right there, okay? And then maybe one down here. That's what you use to calculate your slope, okay? The line, not the data points, okay? But like I said, I'll emphasize that again when we get to that point. All right? Slope is what? Hopefully, that's not the first time you've seen that. Rise over run. Rise is the difference in the y points. How much does this rise? And run is the difference in the x points. How much does that run? That says the change in x, the change in y. Rise is the change in y. Run is the change in x. Okay. If you got two points, you take the difference of those two points, or graphically, you can just count. Okay, that's what this says. Maybe one of these points has a zero there, so it makes life a little easier, but you're going to do rise over run. The equation of a line, again, is y is mx plus b. y is your y-coordinate. But maybe it's not y, maybe it actually has meaning. Maybe it's distance. Slope, you calculate it off your graph. X, maybe it isn't x anymore. It actually has meaning. It's actually time. And then your y-intercept, whatever that is as coordinates, there it is, the y-intercept, right? That's where it crosses the y-axis. That number goes in here, whatever it is. So for example, here's a point, 10, 4.4, and another point, 0, 1.4. I'm not going to spend too much time with this. Put in the two coordinates. Remember, that can be written like this. Same thing. That slope, it's the change in y over the change in x, if you got two points. You can count it, or you just take the difference of the two points. That's the slope. If it has units, you put the units in there. If this happens to be meters, then that's meters. If this happens to be seconds, then that's seconds. And do you remember in Science 10, maybe someone told you that the slope of a distance time graph happens to be velocity. Well, look at the units. Meters a second is velocity. All right. What kind of a relationship is that? Does it look like a line? Yeah. Then it's a linear relationship. There's another word for that. Direct relationship. Most of you have taken Math 11. Does that kind of look like half a parabola? Our most basic parabola maybe looks like that. And if you haven't done Math 11, well, let me quickly show you. Okay, y is x squared. There's a parabola. All we want to do, though, we don't care about the negative stuff. That doesn't make any sense when we're talking about whatever units this is. I just want the positive part, okay? 
just that part in the first quadrant. That's exactly what that graph looks like. There's an exponent there that isn't 1 anymore. This is called exponential. This happens to be the exponent of 2. It could be to the exponent of 3, maybe 4, I don't know. Okay? But as x gets bigger, y gets bigger exponentially. Okay? Because we square it. The other one, inverse. And you guys did this last lab because there's an inverse relationship between frequency and period. Period is 1 over the frequency, just like y is m times 1 over x. If this is frequency, period is 1 over x. So that graph looks like this. Okay? So the faster this thing vibrates, the frequency, well, that's the smaller the period. Okay, it's an inverse relationship. That's just, you just kind of generally got to hopefully understand what I'm saying, right? When I'm saying, look at the shape of this graph. Okay, we don't have to know it like bang. In your assignment, it's just going to ask you, is it an inverse, direct, or exponential? Look at the shapes of the graphs. That's basically it, okay? So don't go, you know, freaking out. What's he saying? Oh, my God. Okay, we just want the shape here. All right, do we know what the shape this is? Direct, good, linear, makes a line. The difference in Y, after I, there's my data, okay, it's all over the place, but that's my line of best fit through all that data. Don't look at the data, look at the actual line. This goes through that point, that's 25, and it goes to this point, 5. So change in Y is, what's 25 minus 5? 20. Okay, and then the same point, this is 18, this is 1, so what's the change in that? What's 18 take away 1? 17. So slope is rise over run, 20 seventeenths, and these guys want you to make a decimal, which usually makes sense, and we get 1.18. What's the units? Meters on the top, should have put that there, seconds on the bottom. And meters a second means what? What's the meaning there? What physical concept is that? It's velocity. That's a speed. The slope of a distance time graph is speed. Again. Right? So that's what they're showing you here. One other thing that we don't really have, to put this in an equation, what is the actual equation? The equation of a line is y equals mx plus b. y is distance. That's right here. Okay, that's what y represents here. That's my slope. m, what's x? Time. Okay, plus, now what's the y-intercept? What does it look like here? They're kind of guessing. And I'm not saying you just want to guess by looking at your graph. There is a way to figure it out. We did that in Math 10, but I'm not going to spend the time doing it right here. They're saying that looks like what? They're saying it looks like 4. Do you agree with them? And it's hard to tell because each line here is 2.5, isn't it? If you look on yours, it's easier to see than this. Okay? The second line is 5. Each one of these is two and a half. It's kind of hard to tell, but they're telling you that's what it is. And it's actually not meters a second. That should be just be meters. There's a little typo in the book. So, question, which you probably want because it's not in here. We did this in Math 10, but... You're going to need to know this for your assignment question. What is the distance at 11 seconds? That's what our equation here is going to help us determine. Is that on our graph? Could I even see it? Does it? Is there 11 seconds in our graph somewhere? Yeah, it's right here, right? 
Do you see exactly what's the corresponding distance for that time? It's kind of hard to tell. You could guess, but we probably want a more accurate answer. So I'm going to use this equation to figure it out. I'm going to substitute 11 seconds in for time and I want to figure out what is the distance. So distance is 1.18 times time plus 4. Okay, otherwise known as clear 1.18 times 11 plus 4. Looks like the distance should be about 16.98. Okay, reasonable. What's reasonable? I only got two sig figs here, so let's just round that to 17. What's the units for distance? Meters. Does that look reasonable here? Does that look like about 17? Yeah, it's between 15 and 20, it's closer to 15. Maybe we'll ask you one B. What is the time when the distance is fifty meters? Could we even do that graphically? Does our graph go up to 50 meters? No. It only goes to, what's that, 22 or something? 18, 20, 22. Can't do it. That's called extrapolation, the math term. Okay, I want to know way over here, what is the corresponding... No, distance, sorry, 50. This up this, this scale. 50 is up here, right? I want to know the corresponding time. What is that? Got them backwards. Well, that's why I got a formula. Distance is 50, I substitute it in here. So 50 is 1.18, or it's right here. Time, I don't know what that is. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Plus four meters. How do I solve this thing for T? Grade nine algebra. So I would get rid of the four first. Subtract it to both sides, right? It's gone. That's 46 is 1.18 T. How do I get T by itself? Divide it away. It says 1.18 times T, so I want to do the opposite operation. Divide. So T is 46 over 1.18. Thirty. Let's round it a little bit. Thirty-nine seconds. Okay. Look kind of reasonable. I guess so. That's way the heck out here somewhere. There's twenty-two seconds. Thirty-nine seconds. All right. Way off my graph. The only way I can do that is algebraically. Okay. So that's why we want the relationship linear, so we can figure a couple things out. Okay, so two questions after your quiz. Two's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight parts, but it's just using the equation. Okay, so it's essentially one question. But again, yeah, well, this page, 28 to 30, 29, 30. But read, guys, then do, and I, I know it's kind of hard sometimes to read here, but you do it at home. There's good stuff here. I didn't go over it all. Okay? So, it's helpful. All right? So, any questions on the quiz? Yes. 